Hi, this is 365801 and this is another 2022 BL a year in review video and in this video I'm looking at all of the overhyped books I read. So for this video I'm going to be looking at books that are overhyped. I have previously done a video about my DNFs for 2022 uh, so if you're interested I'll put a link in the corner for that. Um, check that one out, it's nice and short. Uh, this one hopefully will not be too long either, I'm going to try and race through it. Um, this is overhyped books or they really should be books that were hyped to me and then I was a little bit let down and disappointed in because they were so hyped. They just, you know, weren't as fantastic as I thought they were. I might still give them three stars, four stars, even five stars. But if they weren't amazing, um, then there is an element of disappointment there. Um, and these are specifically hyped books that unfortunately I believed the hype and I should not have believed the hype. So we're going to start with um, one that's not actually a, a particular book. It's the whole series. Now I mentioned this in my DNFs because there were a couple of DNFs in there. And that's the Franklin U University series. This is a, a series that was set up by Saxon James and Eden Finlay. Um, it was supposed to be a similar setting and then all of these other uh, male male romance writers would be writing stories that were set at this Franklin University um, in California, San Diego I think and they would have kind of interconnecting characters which is fine because Saxon James and Eden Finley and obviously I'm gonna want to read that. Um, it was all over Instagram for months, months and months and months. I was so hyped by the time the first one came out, um, and it, then it was I was like, oh, it was okay, it was it was alright, <laughs> and then you know, then we had the dating disaster, Saxon James, which was good. It was good. It was, it was good. And Mister Romance, uh, Louisa Masters, that was alright. Bet you, my Neve Welder, it was alright. The glow up did not finish. Learning curve, oh, it was alright by N.R. Walker, which I think was my first ever N.R. Walker. In fact, it was my first ever Riley Hart as well. Thank goodness I've read Louisa Masters before. <laughs> and Louisa Masters is, is a, a three to four star read for me almost every single time. So great, she's in her wheelhouse. Bet you, Neve Wilder, first time I ever read a Neve Wilder. Um, Making Waves, Christina Lee, did not finish, did not finish. And then football royalty, boom, five stars, boom, in Finlay. <laughs> so like I said, you know, I could give a five star and still say this was overhyped. Was this particular volume overhyped, football royalty? Mm, I don't think so. I was, I was there for it. I was there for it as soon as I got the email and the wee snippet of like, here, here's a, here's a wee first, you know, a few paragraphs of the first chapter, boom, in, loved it. I, I have to say, I, I wasn't sure, is it Eden Finley or is it Saxon James that I like more? And I thought it was like Even Stevens, but actually I think it might be Eden Finley that I like more because it's more more of the more of the sporting side of things. And as you know, 2022 was all about sporting stories for me. So um, at least in this respect, looking at this, I have been able to uh, discover something about my own reading tastes a little bit more, which is that I prefer Eden Finlay to Saxon James, which is not something I thought I would say. And I prefer Eden Finlay to everyone else who's on this list, which is unfortunate. Um, it, so yeah, it was, it was overhyped because for months people were going on about it. It was all, all over. And each of these books have, um, an illustrated copy as well as the standard format copy. I mean, it, it was all over. Hype, 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 hype. Disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. <laughs> Except for Eden Finley, obviously. So yeah, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about uh, when it comes to the overhypedness. Uh, when people say, this is going to be great, you're going to love it, it's great. And then you just, eh, well, it's all right. Well, it's okay. Or you're disappointed. So on to some single books. If this gets out, 
Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich. This is, I think, the first Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich that I had ever read. Um, this did come out in 2021. It was available on NetGalley. I got a copy. I could not read the digital copy to save myself. It was like, oh god, it was a slog. So I started it um, either at the end of 2021. So this is go going back quite far. And it wasn't until the paperback volume actually came out and I was able to get a copy from the library that I could sit and read it and tolerate it because it's overly long. It needs an editor. I'm sorry, but it is. Okay, it is. I still gave it four stars. I still enjoyed myself. It still had lots of interesting things to say about it. If I was reviewing this right now, I don't think I would give it four stars. So probably it's like a three and a half, but I've rounded up. That's probably more accurate. That's the thing about Goodreads. I either have to round up or round down because I'm like, you're not a three star? Well, maybe you're a three star. I might give you a three star now. I might go and change these. This is me reviewing my year. So actually, um, but there were some things about this story that I really enjoyed, but it was just like this whole big thing about, oh, it's the One Direction, One Direction book. And yet I was never a fan of One Direction because I'm an old lady and I was a little bit too old lady for One Direction when they came out. Like, go boys, you do you. And unfortunately, um, I now know a lot more about One Direction <laughs> because I read this book. Um, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But um, it definitely felt like a slog to get through. So the 3.99 3 is actually maybe accurate because I'm thinking mine should really be a 3. It was probably a 3.5. But I rounded up just because I was giving a review on NetGalley, which I shouldn't have done. But... Hey, that I that's what I did. That's what I did. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, this is another sort of YA one. It was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Award. So there you go. There's some hype. 2017, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is the first book in the Montague Siblings. I've not read the, the next ones. I enjoyed this because of the audio book. I tried reading it could not get into it at all once again i was like oh this is such a slog why am i trying to slog through these books just because they're supposed to be good and they're supposed to be ya lgbt with a bit of male male romance you know this is me trying to branch out <laughs> and struggling and um everyone's like oh this is such a good one such a good one as you say like goodreads choice award there you go there's some hype um it was okay I was bored a lot of the time. And in fact, I don't think I would even give this a four star now. It would definitely be a three star. Uh, I liked the little extra when they actually do some stuff because, you know, I'm an I'm a lady and I'm not a YA. Uh, so yeah, it, it was okay, but it wasn't worth the hype. No. The next one though, oh my God, I saw this everywhere, all over Instagram all over Instagram. This is The Alpha Sun by Penny Jessup. Like, this was all over Amazon. The Amazon were pushing it hard. Like, hey, do you want this? We know you want this. You want to buy this, right? You want to buy this? And I'm like, no, I do not want to buy this. In the end, I did get a copy. <laughs> and I I mean, it's three stars. 3.3 3 is actually kind of accurate. I've given it a four star. It's not a four star. Maybe I give it a four star. Like all of these books, I'm like looking at them going, why did I give them four stars? They're not. They're like three, three and a half. This one is definitely a, a two and a half. This is a two and a half. <laughs> I'm going to have to amend all of these star ratings because actually when I think about it, I'm like, you were, you were being too kind. Um, the main reason that this is it's like super super hyped it was all about you know oh it's it's a shifter one but it's it's okay to like this shifter one like go fuck off, fuck off really get over yourselves this is a ya male male shifter but it's it's fine for you to to like this because this is published by you know a proper publisher it's not self-published or indie published honestly get over your fucking self is what i want <laughs> i hate that i hate that and we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that the 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 fact that if something is commercially published then it's fine for you to like it but if the exact same thing is published indie or self-published by a woman writer oh no that's trash over there yeah this is me on my high horse <laughs> The fact that I read through this and it was a perfectly serviceable story. And I was like, okay, 
he's not wanting to be with him because he doesn't want to admit he's gay or he's bi or whatever he doesn't want to admit the the homosexual feelings that he has for this mate um and they went through this whole thing the ending on the beach i wanted to fucking throw this book i hated it i hated it i hated it and it was like why <laughs> in no sense penny jessup what the fuck <laughs> honestly um i'd love to know what other people's opinions of the alpha sun is because i don't know anyone else who read it even though it was everywhere anyway that's enough that's enough <sighs> breathe breathe but that ending guys oh my god <laughs> okay on to another one this is better than people by rowan parish and i can hear a collective no this isn't overhyped yeah it kind of is it kind of is and I feel good about the three star rating that I've got there. Well done. Well done. Pat on the back. Because even though it's got a 3.97, which is almost a full star more, I didn't really like it. I was I was bored. I was bored. This is the first in the Garnet Run series. And <clears throat> if I'm honest, um, thinking this is overhyped has not put me off wanting to read the rest of the series. I would. I'd like to. But um this was just dull and i didn't really like a lot of the uh the sort of mental health issues that were being discussed or the way that it was discussed i don't know it just felt a little bit meh but also really really boring i don't know it was just really dull like what happened nothing nothing happened but everyone has gone on about how great this is. Um, so maybe Rowan Parish has a lot of hype. And uh, other Rowan Parish books might be better for me. I I have been told that the second one in the series is, is a better one. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's not a stretch because this was boring as hell. If I'm totally honest. Would I recommend this? No, unless you need to sleep. Um, honestly, ugh, it was such a struggle to finish because I was just like, be over now. I really didn't like it. Uh, but everyone loves it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Okay, on to the next one. Um, and I'm not sure if this is overhyped by anyone other than Michaela Cole because I follow her on Instagram and she's always posting about this book about last night. This is the Nox and Knights number one in the series. I don't think number two's come out yet because this is still all over my Instagram. So it can't just be Michaela. <laughs> this was fine, but it was just only fine. It isn't worth me seeing it every single time I log into Instagram. So I'm sorry, Michaela. I might have to just unfollow you because I, I don't want to see a book that I was just like meh all the time about. I'm waiting for book two. When book two comes out, I will give it a read and see. But honestly, I was... <sighs> it, it's just YA. <laughs> but it's got to be YA because I can't see it as being anything other than that. It just felt like, I don't care about these boys. <laughs> I had no feelings. <laughs> I had no real feelings about these boys. And also, it's all about soccer. And I'm like, it's football. Oh, my God. Oh. And if you know anything about football... And I know football because I am I live in Scotland. So, you know, it's like a process of osmosis. You just know it. You just grow up in the culture. So you just know it. And so I was like, oh, <laughs> no, this was not it. And it's all over my Instagram. And I would like to just stop seeing it, please. Okay, so this next one is one that it was everywhere and then it was nowhere. So the hype was there, but only briefly. And unfortunately, I got swept up in that hype. And picked up A Love, Hate and Clickbait by Liz Bowery. <clears throat> Do I think this was a good book? No. No. But I do think it had one of the best lines. And I wrote a review for it because it was just hilarious. It was a great line. But the rest of it I did not enjoy. It's a political one. So it's about two people who should not be uh, engaging with each other romantically because of their political uh, situation. So I'm going to see if I can actually find um, my review for it. See all the ones that you're supposed to? Yeah, yeah, okay. 
uh yeah here you go <clears throat> the only fanfic he'd ever read had involved tentacles and had scarred him for life also he might have downloaded a copy of it whatever and i put hashtag relatable content uh so this is a 3.75 out of 5 and i rounded it up so good good on you <laughs> you you're you're accurate in your your 3.75 which is not a terrible score like if someone said i'm going to give you that for a book i i wrote i'd be like thanks thanks for that but you know and i quoted that's great but did i think it was worth the hype no i do not think it's worth the hype i think it is just a, a three three and a half star read um perfectly serviceable kind of like a you know kind of like a netflix hallmark movie like i can see this 100 percent being made into a netflix hallmark-esque movie um, especially if you threw in a bit of Christmas, but even like a midsummer one, like I could see them doing that and, um, it being really, really bad, like a really bad movie. Yeah, this is, this is that kind of thing, but I'm happy to see it. It's just, it's just got a lot of promotion briefly and I unfortunately fell for it and then was just like, meh, meh it's okay. The next one though, oof, you're going to be shocked. Some people loved The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. Um, I am not one of them. <laughs> Good Read Choice Award. So yeah, it was everywhere. And once again, I have to, to point this out. That if... Um, a, this is maybe not the time to be talking about it, but still, I'm just going to say, if you are a, um, a white woman of indeterminable sexuality, you are allowed to write male male romance if you if it gets published commercially and has lots of um marketing money put behind it uh people so many people have read this so many people loved it i mean it's got forty two thousand ratings eight thousand seven hundred reviews it's got 4.21 i gave it a four honestly it's more like a three the ending oh my god that ending was shit um, sorry if you love this. <laughs> this is just my opinion. I did not love it. I got I got so many booktubers going, I love this, I love this, I love this at the end of 2021. Everyone said this is great, and I was like, Oh, this must be it. This is this is the title. Like previously we've had Red, White, and Royal Blue or Boyfriend Material. You know, oh, this is the title that everyone is allowing to be within the book space. That's a male male romance. That's the one, because there's only allowed to be one, right? It's either a lesbian title or it's um, a gay title. You're only allowed one. You can't have two in the romance section of the Goodreads Award. It's one or the other. And for 2021, it was a charm offensive. So, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, lots of people said it was great. And I, I read it and I didn't think it was great. Uh, once again, I thought it was overly long. I'm like, oh, so bored. And also the whole mental health thing. And I was like, oh my God, these two people, they don't need a relationship. They need therapy. Once again, I am asking characters, please go into therapy. Ugh. <laughs> this made me mad. The, the ending made me mad because I was like, that's a shit ending. How can anyone think that was a good ending? This whole book, I was like, okay, 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 I'm forgiving you. This is fine. This is fine. I'm liking some of the characters. I'm liking some aspects. Some of the dialogue's okay. I'm getting a little bit bored. Getting a little bit bored. And then right at the end, I was like, are you kidding me? Ugh. Anyway, next. Next. Okay, we're on to some manga. I only have one manga that was overhyped. And I know this is what, this is the one that's going to hurt the people watching. And I'm so, so sorry. I gave it four stars. I maintain it's still a four star read. I enjoyed it. But so many people hyped this book to me. Hyped it to the highest heavens. They were like, this is the best. This is the best. This is the best. And so I was like, oh, I need to read this then. And then it was just like, yeah, that was good. But it wasn't amazing. It was, it was just, yeah, that was good. 
And that's why I kind of feel like a lot of Tokyo Pop's titles so far, their new ones for their Love Love line, they're lovely titles. I need to read a lot more because I've got so many on uh, digitally in my Kindle, but I haven't read them yet. Because every time I pick one up, I'm like, this is good. This is good. It's not great. It's not amazing. But it's good. And that's kind of how I felt about it. Don't Call Me Dirty. Good, solid story. Definitely recommend reading this one along with Don't Call Me Daddy. The two of them together is a really good time. But it's just, it's good time. Not great time. So there you go. Uh, okay, this might hurt some people. Overhyped? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> did I cry my eyes out? Yes. But did I feel slightly uncomfortable about some aspects? Did I still give it five stars? Yes. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Great book. Loved it. Goodreads Choice Award 2017. Very good. I do remember feeling uncomfortable about certain things that happened in this book. I still think it's very well written. I still think it's very interesting. But is it... Is it amazing? Uh, I loved it. It was great. But I don't think it's worth the massive hype that it has. With oh, almost 2 million ratings. 187,000 reviews. Wow. And a 4.46. A lot of people love this book. I just thought it was great. But not to the heights um, that people really, really seem to love it. So, I mean, five stars. So please forgive me that I'm not saying this is the best book ever written. But it's not the best book ever written. And when someone says this is the best book ever, ever written, and you read it and you think, oh, it's going to be the best book ever written. And it's not. It's just a very good book. It's a very good book. So, yeah, unfortunately, it is what it is. Next one. Also, <laughs> just just killing off killing off my friends and, and anyone watching. I'm so sorry. Um, the House in Cerulean Sea. Good, good Read Choice Award. Hyped up so much. This book has been so hyped. Uh, this is a 2020 nominee for Best Fantasy. And it is... Obviously, T.J. Clune, House in the Cerulean Sea. I have been wanting to read this book for so long. I remember seeing it back in 2020. People were talking about it. We had the buzzword reading challenge. And I think May or June, I think it was May, was house or home as a buzzword. And I was like, oh, I could read the House in the Cerulean Sea. Great. Um, or it might have been 2021 when that was. Anyway, I've been seeing this since it came out. Lots of people have been talking about it. I've watched review after review after review. Everyone has read this book. And everyone says it's really, really good. And I also think it's very, very good. But it took me nine months to read. So I can't give it five stars. I originally was going to. I put five stars down. And I was like, yeah, this is a five star read because it's very, very good. It's very competent. But when I think about it, like the first third took me nine months to read. I can't give that five stars. That's not a five star read. So yeah, um, I'm not dissing it. It's a beautiful book. I just wish I'd had a physical copy rather than the digital. I may have read it a lot faster if I'd had the physical copy. So that might come down to it. So yeah, the format you read something in also does affect how much you experience the book as you're reading it and therefore how you interact with the hype of the book. So yeah, this is one that I think if I'd read it straight away from physical copy rather than, uh, because there's no way I could have read it with the Audible. I heard, listened to a wee bit and I was like, oh, no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, nine months to read the first hundred pages is not a five star book for me. And unfortunately, it is. But TJ Clune has redeemed himself in some ways. I did read Wolf Song, which was definitely hyped and I loved it. So <laughs> I'm going to be like, that was worth the hype. And also I have been um, uh, allowed a an ARC copy of the next one that's coming out. I think it's coming out in April. So I'm really excited about that. And that will be read sometime in February or March. So 
excited about that one. So yeah, that's everything um, that I read that I thought was overhyped. And I've talked way too long about them all. And I didn't expect myself to be so <laughs> angry about things. So sorry if that was that was me being like, whoa, whoa, calm your jets. Cool, cool your beans, lady. Um, but yeah, there were definitely some books that people were like, oh, they're so good. And then I read them and I was like, it was just okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'd love to know your thoughts if if you also think some of these are overhyped um, or if there are other books that you read in 2022 that were overhyped for you. Um, maybe I have hyped up a book and you just were like, great, that sounds brilliant. And then you read it and you were like, what was she talking about? That was only OK. I'd love to hear that, too. I would love to hear that. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry if this has been a traumatic experience for anyone. <laughs> mainly because I, I did know this would be uh, quite a difficult one to, to film. But yeah, those are my overhyped books for 2022. Many of them are very high rated, even by me, but just still a little bit uh, touch disappointing because they weren't as good as everyone said they were going to be. So I really have to just stop listening to people <laughs> saying that something's good. If someone just says, read this, let me know what you think. I'll be like, okay. Uh, did you enjoy it? It was fine. Good. That's all I need to know. So yeah, stop hyping things to me. <laughs> I have to stop being in, in, enthused about things. Honestly, though, this is just a wee point. I need that. I need to be hyped about a book coming out. I am so scared for Raven, the the final and book eight in the Forbidden Desire series, because the only person that is hyping this book up is me. I'm hyping it up to myself and so I'm so so worried that when I finally read it I'm going to be bitterly disappointed because it won't live up to my own expectations which ugh, is terrible so I'm going to have to just keep telling myself it's going to be bad you're going to be disappointed don't worry about it <laughs> so yeah um, I hope you enjoyed this video I'm 365801 and I make videos about BL manga yaoi male male romance and all that good stuff I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry if you didn't. Uh, take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!